Hi guys, it's Sophie. So today I'm going to be doing my fourth Around the World book haul. Um, I was going to do a standard book haul, but I actually looked at my books and just because of the fact I'm reading what I'm buying so quickly, actually there's no point because I'm going to do them in a wrap up soon. So I'm not going to bother doing a, I didn't do an October one either, I'm not going to do a November haul. Um, probably not going to do a December haul unless I get loads of stuff for Christmas. Um, but yeah, I do have Around the World books that I bought myself, um, so I'm going to be sharing those with you now. Okay, so the first one I have is my pick for Slovenia, and this one is The Tree With No Name by Drago Jankar. And this sounds like a really mad book, like I, ca I can't think of another way to describe it but just to read you the back. Um, it says, a diary recounting four decades of sexual exploits, the memoir of a mental institutional attendant, and a familiar looking bicycle, a judge out of a river. The discovery of these artefacts sends an archivist on an obsessive quest to discover their owners' identities and fates. Yeah, it just sounds completely mad. Um, I'm really hoping that I like it. It's it's like weirdly printed. I don't know if it's messed up printed or whether it's supposed to be like this. If anyone's read this book, a small chance anyone's read this book, should it start with chapter 87? <laughs> um, the page numbers are right. So I'm kind of torn because it goes like 87 through 90 then to one. And I didn't want to spoil the book, so yeah, I don't know, I might have to contact the publishing house and just ask if it's been misprinted or whether it's supposed to be read that way because, like, obviously I don't want to, like, ruin the book for myself and read the last four chapters, three chapters first, um, so we'll see, but yeah, there's that one. And the next one I have is slightly battered, I do apologise, um, as I mentioned in one of my other videos, lots of these are going to be second hand, uh, but this one is Chernobyl Prayer um, by Slavana Elicevich. Um, and this is a non-fiction book about um, the lives of the people who were affected by the Chernobyl disaster and um, sort of how how they see their home and how they see themselves in relation to it, um, the land and the identity of the people around it. Um, won a winner of the Nobel Prize in 2015. Um, I'm really interested in this one. I don't know if I've ever spoken about it on my channel before, but. Um, I used to have this um, really strange desire to go and visit like a place that had been affected by nuclear radiation or um, like a nuclear bomb and I know that sounds really weird because it just sounds like I'm jumping into like you know go and get cancer but but sort of the reality is if you have like guy counters and you're aware of it you can go on like tours with people who let you go around this place that's kind of been left by all humans and um everything's abandoned very quickly but there's still kind of animal life and it's kind of the world taking it back but it's also got that strange like element of danger there and that you are avoiding hotspots so yeah I um, used to watch on YouTube this uh, scientist who goes to these areas and goes around and films what she does so um, a bit of a different kind of angle um, these, these are obviously people who are still living there or were living there at the time um, but yeah, I, I've kind of had a bit of an interest in that for a long time, so I'm hoping that I really like this one. It gives me um, a sort of different approach to that. And the next one is my pick for Slovakia, and that one is Seeing People Off um, by Jana Bonova. Um, this one is like a really tiny little book. Um, I also think it's really pretty, I think it's really nicely put together. Um, it was $2 Radio. Um, we published this one. But this is a portrait of a couple. Now you guys know that I don't do like romance books but I really like like realistic portrayals of relationships um, and this is sort of the, focusing on the lives of two people who are living together in like this enormous apartment in Slovakia. Um, yeah I think it should be quite like a lively book from the cover and from like the there's a little um, author bio um, in the in the inside of it, and um, it won the European Union Prize for Literature. So yeah, I have high hopes for this one. Um, this is one that I hadn't heard about before. I started looking for around the world, but I was really excited about ones I found, and that's part of the joys of doing this is trying to find things that I never would have stumbled across otherwise. And the next one, I'm pretty sure, is for Romania. Um, and these are actually plays, and I'm, I'm really excited to have some plays in there. I, I've mentioned that I wanted to have a mix of things, um, and I haven't found anything that, you know, like plays or, or um, really much poetry, or some poetry, but um, yeah, so plays was quite exciting. Um, and it is by Eugene Inscanzo, Insco, Inesco? <laughs> UNESCO, uh, one of those, um, and it's called Rhinoceros, the Chairs, the Lesson. I think my lighting might be a bit bright today. 
Um, it does have a rhino on it, if you can see that there. There you go. So I'm going to read you the back for the little summary. Um, they sound really absurd and really interesting, so yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, it says, In Rhinoceros, we're showing the innate brutality of people when everyone, except for Bergner, turns into clumsy, unthinking rhinoceroses. So that just already sounds, I'm like, yep, yeah, appealing, I'm going to read it. Um, the chairs depicts the futile struggle of two old people to convey the meaning of life to the rest of humanity. Again, sold, I'd read just that one. And then the last one, the lesson, is a funny drama of verbal domination. So yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to this one. This is one, um, like a country that I found lots of stuff on, like, mm, I think there's one called The Land of Green Plums, she says. Um, and I was like, mm, I should probably read that. Uh, and then I found this one and I was like, yep. Yeah, Sold, this is my kind of thing. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'm really gonna get get some enjoyment from these. The next one is my pick for Serbia, and I know really like very little about this book. Um, it's a collection of short stories called A Tomb for Boris Dav Davidovich, she says. Um, and it's by Danny Liso Kliss, and yeah, these are um, short stories, I think there's seven in there that are kind of dark and relating to, yeah, it's a social self-destruction. Um, so I think it's a fairly kind of political short story collection, but I really don't know very much about it. There were quite slim pickings um, from what I found in Serbia, and I wasn't I wasn't really drawn to any of the like, novels that I'd found. And I thought, you know, what, I'm just going to go for some short stories. I tend to find that if um, I don't really know what I'm into, short stories tend to just give me like a nice. Um, insight to to that author or to that subject um so i don't know i don't know how much i'm going to like this one or not um but it was the one that stood out to me the most of the ones and who knows like maybe this will be one that really surprises me and the next one is my pick for the netherlands and i've had a lot of comments saying that um this author didn't live in the netherlands most of his life he was just born there which is a shame because i didn't know that like when i was like looking up the books and, and also for my challenge i was going with where they where people were born um, so that's kind of what I was checking rather than like how long they'd lived in the country for um, so yeah I do apologize if this is annoying if you're from the Netherlands um, I've already bought it so I'm gonna read it um, and it is The Loser by Thomas Bernhard um, I think this sounds absolutely fabulous um, it's a bit of a complicated one but essentially it's about the relationship between Glenn Gould who's the guy who does all of the like um, like bark piano pieces like if you go on YouTube and you look up um, certain pieces lots of them are played by him so you probably heard him even if you haven't heard of him um, but it's, it's the kind of relationship between him and two of his students and when they're his students they're like there's no point in me ever playing the piano because he is too good <laughs> and one of them decides that he wants to kill himself and the other one decides um, that he's going to give up playing the piano and just go like into you know go off into the world and just disappear really um, the whole story is told in one unbroken paragraph and it's a monologue so yeah there's a lot to be interested in there. like it's already about like a pianist that I really enjoy um, strange like style um, it's it's like it's a little bit intimidating because there's literally there's no chapters there's no breaks there's nothing it's just one whole flowing thing um, so I think what I might do is just literally try and read it in one go and it's not might be too much but I might just clear a day she's and look how excited I am <laughs> um, yeah so I think I might just clear a day and just go with it um, and it's like 200 pages so I should be able to read it like three or four hours five hours maybe depending on breaks. Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I don't know. I'm really looking forward to this one. And the next one I think sounds really cool. It's, it's a really long one for the challenge. Um, it's like 500 pages long and the rule was supposed to be that they were meant to be under 300 pages. But I was so attracted to this um, idea and um, the like ideas it's exploring that I was like, do you know what, I'm just going to have a couple of longer ones. I've got some that are under 100 pages. Um, and this one is A Spare Life um, by Lydia Dimaskova. Um, and this is a coming of age story about two twins um, who grew up in communist Yugoslavia. Um, now they um, sort of, they've got their own lives and their own stuff going on, but they also have this added pressure of the fact that they're conjoined twins, they're conjoined at the head. Um, and as they grow older, they decide to go to America and have an operation that will split them um, so that they can live separate lives. Now that in itself is quite an appealing kind of storyline for me, but the thing 
that I think is really interesting about this book is that it's used as a metaphor for the transition between communism and democracy. So the idea of um, coming together to work on projects um, with those close to you versus one and oneself. So I think it's something that hopefully is going to be done really well. Um, interesting topic, interesting things to explore and yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it won, what did it win? I'm sure it won something. Yeah, I won the European Union Prize for Literature, which I think one of the other ones I, I did and this hall had, um, so I have high hopes. And the next one is also a bit long, um, and similarly, like, I was just I was just drawn to it, okay? Um, and this is My Pit for Latvia, and it's High Tide um, by Inga Abel. And um, this book is told um, re in reverse, so we start at the end of the story and we go directly backwards. It's not flashbacks, it's backwards. Um, and we find out about a woman who has a lover who has died and a husband who's in prison um, and we work back through the situation to find out what's happened. So it's almost like a mystery um, because you don't quite understand the whole of the story until you get to the beginning, um, <laughs> which is the end. So yeah, I think it should be good. Um, I don't think this won anything. This won anything? No, I don't think this is one living. <laughs> uh, maybe it has, maybe I just can't find it. Um, but yeah, I found this one and it just really appealed to me. I like the idea of like a personal mystery. Well, like it is kind of a murder mystery because you have this dead lover, but he's, do you understand what I mean? Like he's dead at the beginning, but you don't know how long he's gonna have been dead for. It's not like he's just died from what I understand. So it's kind of like you're working back to discover the beginning of this relationship and how these three people um, come into this conflict and um, the situation. I think I have a good idea of what might have happened, but I want to see how it's done. Um, so yeah, I, I'm i really excited for a lot of these ones actually. These are um, quite a lot of the European ones, uh, so they're ones, you know, some of them are ones that I've known about already. There's, um, it's quite easy to find translated European literature, so I had quite a lot of choice for most of those countries. Um, yeah, I think I think it's going to be really good fun. That's that's a kind of area um, that I'm really looking looking forward to going to, like Eastern Europe. Um, it just seems like they there are really strange stories that are coming out of there at the minute, and um, it's really something I haven't read much of. So yeah. Hopefully you're excited for some of these. There might be another small round the world one in December, but I, I don't know. Um, I'm obviously starting in January um, and I have, can you see, oh, that little shelf up there in the bottom one um, is my books with around the world. So they're the ones I'm gonna be getting on with. Um, I've got plenty to start the year off. So um, I'm probably gonna hold off and just read through some of those and then pick stuff up as I need to to read through uh, rather than doing massive hauls all at the beginning of the year and then having nothing left to buy. Um, I'm gonna spread my buying out. So yeah, I might see you next month for another haul. I might not, um, you'll definitely see me, but it might just not be for a haul. Anyway, enough rambling. Hope you have a good day. Let me know in the comments down below which, if any of those, um, you're interested in. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye.